is Kristen Manners and we are doing a very special edition today. Um, the reason that we're, we're here today is because we have a very, very important event coming up and I am very privileged today to be here. Um, in April, starting on the 26th of April, is the targeted individual rally in Sacramento, California and I have been uh, very privileged uh, to join these individuals that are here today. And I am going to be a guest speaker at the targeted individual rally in Sacramento, California. But more importantly, the organizers of this rally are with us today in order to tell us what this rally is all about, um, the importance of this rally, and what it means to targeted individuals. So I, I'm also joined by my co-host V with my utmost respect. I want to introduce um, some of the organizers of this, of this event. Uh, Dr. Matthew, I want to start with you. And can you tell us a little bit about this rally? And you have done an excellent job putting together a flyer for this rally. Um, thank you for joining us. And um, thank you so much for letting me be a part of this. You guys have done an excellent job. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for helping us to promote this, uh, this event. Uh, I'm kind of one of the secondary uh, organizers. Uh, the other people that are on this call are much more um, in the forefront of organizing this event. Uh, I did write the flyer and that was a group effort. Um, I, I, uh, we shared ideas and we came up with a flyer that um, attempts to take a down to earth approach um, that will resonate uh, better with the general public. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dr. Um, Matthew. Um, who I wanted to bring on to explain more about the particulars of the rally was um, uh, Scott Lewis. And <clears throat> I'm actually really privileged to have Scott Lewis on here because he has also been on my show targeted. Scott, how are you today? I'm doing okay, how about yourself? I I'm doing good, thank you. Good. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. I like uh, I like being here with you guys and being able to uh, participate, you know, and yeah. um, talk about these things that need to be talked about and do the things that we need to do. And, uh, you know, this is basically our group. This is what we've been doing for about, uh, you know, for a while now. So this is, um, you know, Michelle, Justin, Matt, Earl, you know, everybody, me, myself, uh, you, Kristen, and um, a lot of other people, you know, that want to help and join and participate and do these types of things with each other and be able to get out and, you know, and go to California and basically just, you know, rally together and do a march and, you know, get the, get the exposure out there because this stuff is, this stuff is coming out like uh, pretty, pretty fair, I think. And there's a lot of things going on, you know, in the community and around the world that, you know, there's, there's like a, there's like an awakening happening. There's a lot of activity that's happening, I believe. But you know, it's that's like you know, a lot of people do believe that. But Scott, so, yeah. Scott, if you had to, if you had to really like narrow it down for you at least, um, maybe for a group in general, well, what would you consider to be the main goal of this rally? If you had to really isolate it, what is the main goal of this rally? What What do you think you want to have accomplished here? Well, to me, the main goal of this rally would be like uh, Californians out there because there's so many TIs. I think it's important to bring them all together. You know, I know it's, I know that there's like a lot of people that are being targeted over there and there's more people in one area than, than you think. And it's important for TIs over there to keep gathering together. This, this rally is for the purpose of that. And um, we want people to keep going and keep, keep adding on and keep jumping in together and, and, and pushing forward, you know, for the exposure because, you know, California is, seems like one of those places that, that just doesn't seem to let up anywhere, you know, and it's, it's very hard to be there. Enough for TIs because 
you know, I hear the stories of how they're targeted and everything, and it seems like it's, besides maybe some of the southern states here in the U.S., I know that a lot of the west, the west side of the country, a lot of the areas over there are pretty bad, you know, and it can get worse. Um, but it's just, I think it's important for the TIs over there in the, you know, the community to, to come together and say what we need to say and basically just keep rallying and pushing forward to the end, you know. So that's it's pretty much like the – like what I believe, you know, because that's, that's my goal and my intentions of that, you know, is, is try to keep bringing more TI together as much as possible and just, you know, keep struggling to the end, you know, so. Absolutely. Earl, um, I, I, I had a chance to speak to you um, via the conference call the night that, that we met. And I want to thank you so much uh, for, for joining us because um, and I, I mean, absolutely zero disrespect when I say it like this, but you and I come from uh, the older generation. You know, I'm, uh, I'm 52 years old and knowing, having no knowledge of, of this prior to when this started happening to me, you know, my main mes message uh, for targeted individuals is that this um, does not have to run your life, that this does not have to manage your existence. You know, I want to offer up a message of hope. You know, how do, how do you feel about that um, as far as being an older American? Well, first I wanted to say that uh, it's been about two years. Uh, they first started targeting me in the late spring of 2017. So I was 65 years old at that time. I'm 67 now. Yes, sir. And Something that I thought was quite funny, uh, a YouTuber uh, saw a video of me on YouTube and said I was too old to be a targeted individual. So I thought that was quite interesting. Uh, there's, no, there's no age limit to their targeting, you know. No, sir. So I have made up my mind, I guess, maybe within the last few months that I was going to continue to live my life as if they don't exist. Because if I continually focus on them, then it's, it's, you know, I become consumed by them. And I don't want to, I don't want to be consumed. I'm, I still stay alert. I still, you know, do other things that I feel help protect me. But I, I try to focus, I try to focus my energies on doing things that are positive, you know, still getting out, going out, you know, uh, associating with those people who still accept me. <laughs> um, yes. And then, of course, hanging out with other members in the community. In fact, uh, we're hoping to put something together uh, in Chicago real soon where community members can get together and just hang out, go to a restaurant or something. So my message of hope is that don't let it consume you. You know, focus on maintaining relationships with community members, and if you can still maintain relationships with family members. Yeah, and, and that, which is exactly why I asked you what I did, because, um, you know, it's so important for, uh, you know, older members like ourselves to, you know, send that message up to people who are struggling. Justin and Michelle, um, I, I, I've been speaking to Justin for, for quite a while, and, um, you know, Justin is in a very professional position. Um, he works in the healthcare industry. Michelle is also younger, which um, I always have a really hard time uh, dealing with people that are younger and targeted. But Justin, you know, thank you so much for working on the rally. And, and I know that you kind of stay, you know, out of the spotlight. I know a little about your story, but what, what are your hopes um, as far as this rally is concerned? Um, my hopes is uh, that, you know, we, we just explode this out. We light a fire and uh, we, get, uh, we bring this to the public so that the public really understands what's going on um, with targeted individuals. Um, we also want to make this a kind of community type uh, event so that uh, some targeted individuals can go away maybe with uh, some insight or tools or support 
um, as they come to this, uh, you know, this rally, this community event. Um, you know, we're going to um, have some workshops um, that will address the concerns of, um, of, of the TIs there. Um, we're also uh, enabling uh, some speeches to be given um, to um, make the public aware of uh, the atrocities that, uh, you know, of this hidden Holocaust that's going on in our own, in our own world, right? Not only the United States, but the whole world. So that's, that's. Yeah. And, and as far as you are concerned, Michelle, um, what, what message would you like to, to send out for this rally? Um, well, <clears throat> so what, what my, what I uh, envision for this is I just want everyone to get together and beat the isolation. Um, and that is a great counter. Um, I want people to, instead of um, thinking of us all as just victims, we are survivors every day we're alive. So yes. that, that's an important message. And people, when we get together, like people have um, a more positive outlook on life. Um, that's what I found in terms of getting um, a support group together that's confidential, kind of like, you know, any other kind of support group um, where there's a safe space. Um, so I would like to bring that to the rally, that idea to the rally and share that with other people to, to inspire them to get help, to get support, as well as I'm also a nurse. So I like to do like public health public raising public awareness and I believe that this is a public health issue I believe that a lot of these people um, are forced into poverty and so um, yeah. that makes me want to do something you know and it's not about me it's about like wanting to do something to yeah. make sure that everyone is taken care of everyone is validated and that we all come together and and fight this so yeah. that's kind of what Absolutely. Why I want to be involved here, and it's an honor for me to be here. So thank you. You're you're very welcome. I want to go back to Dr. Matthew really quick. Um, I know that you organized the flyer. I, I, I saw the information relating um, to the the event. Can you kind of give a rundown of exactly um, what what the schedule looks like for those days? Well, I think that. Uh... I think Justin might be, and Earl might be better, uh, better able to comment on that because they're more directly um, uh, running the organization. So uh, okay. of, those, of those days, so I think they can comment better than I can on, on okay. the schedule. All right. Well, and, and before they start with that, uh, I, I definitely want to say, Michelle, I love your comment about the, the the not being victims but survivors because I've always yeah, taken the standpoint much. of we survivors need to start becoming conquerors. Exactly. <laughs> we are victims, but we're also survivors. And yeah. you know, to give everyone the credit they need and to empower them. So yeah, thank you. Thanks. Yep. Well yeah, yeah so please tell us uh, uh, about the uh, logistics here. Uh, Let me take it, Justin. Or? Sure, I'll call, go ahead. I'll come in right after you. Brother. Okay. Uh, basically, uh, the itinerary is not set perfectly yet. We're still in discussion about certain things that we want to accomplish, but we will have pre-rally uh, events as well as the events that take place during the 26th and the 27th. <laughs> We're looking forward to having a post-rally event as well. Uh, the itinerary, basically, you know, getting everybody in on the day before uh, the rally, making sure that they're taken care of. Hopefully, we may be able to, to, to bring people together the day before so we can meet together and know one another and feel comfortable with one another. Then, of course, the day of the rally, um, it's a good possibility. Well, I'll just say that it's a possibility. I won't say it's a good possibility. But it's a possibility we may be able to have uh, an opportunity to pass out flyers before our actual start time. Um, on that day, they will have 5,000 people from uh, March of Dimes, uh, you know, at the Capitol. And if we use public sidewalks, and I'll, I'll get confirmation on that, that's one of the events that we want to have. We could have a few people out passing out, uh, you know, flyers and 
mixing with the people prior to our actual start time, which is, which is 11 o'clock. Uh, on Friday, we're hoping to have people out, especially from 11 to 2. We feel that, like those are peak hours, so we will stress that uh, to uh, the participants of this uh, rally. We also want to have uh, people speak. Um, we want to have individuals talk about their personal experiences, um, uh, hopefully in line with, the, our, with our agenda, uh, you know, the talking points that we bring up like in Matt's flyer. And um, we have some, some skits that we're talking about too. I had an opportunity to talk to Justin about some skits. Actually, Justin is the brain, is the uh -huh. head behind those skits. And I like the ideas that he has about it. So I'm going to let him share that if he wants to share it. But some of them are primo. Um, oh, oh. And, uh, you know, basically, uh, outside of the, you know, you're speaking, you know, Christian, uh, Matt will, will speak if I'm yeah. correct. And uh, um, basically, that's pretty much the agenda. We want to do some workshops as well. Uh, one or two, maybe more, depends on who we can get to sign up for the workshops. And we'll, you know, focus on specific agendas that people, that some of the participants may want information on. Uh, but again, these are not solidified yet. So uh, as time goes by, the website will be updated uh, once we, you know, solidify those, uh, those events. Um, and then the post event, I'm not sure yet, but I'm sure we're going to party. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I, I have to commend all of you, though, because, um, you know, having an event like this for targeted individuals is, is difficult just for the mere fact that we are targeted individuals. Just getting an event like this up and running and pulled off um, has its difficulties because of the mere fact uh, of its of its nature, so you guys have done that. A uh, tremendous job. Actually, the next thing that we should really talk about, because we want to have a level of success and and, and, a, and a level of efficacy for this event. Now, there's at least one veteran here I know of dealing with this sort of thing, as Matthew has done these rallies before. Now, when I was first on the Ella Free Show, I was the guest uh, that was behind you, Dr. Dr. Matthew Aaron. And um, I do remember listening to your interview and you were saying that, you, you know, you did a, a, an event like this and you didn't get the numbers that you thought you were going to get. So what did you learn from that scenario? Uh, what is going to be applied to this scenario for it to be more success successful? Well, I'm not the only veteran uh, on this panel, but uh, I know what you're referring to, and that would be the um, rally that we had at the White House in 2017. Um, I was not the organizer of that event. I, I being uh, that I live in DC, I showed up to that. Of course, I'm I'm going to show up to every rally, uh, you know, going forward. And uh, I learned from that event that planning is very important because the organizers of that event basically just put the date out without having any pre-event planning. And um, the other thing I learned from that event is that um, without the planning and without the numbers, it can be somewhat intimidating to be out there, especially when you're in front of the White House. Um, that is a heavily uh, high security area. And uh, even though um, what, I, what I've come to learn over time is that um, even those security um, elements, uh, absolutely, especially in front of the White House, in front of the California State Capitol, even in downtown Chicago, one thing we have um, high respect for in this country is um, freedom of speech and the right to assemble. So even though internally you might feel intimidated, actually I think you um, can get the respect of people 
by expressing your First Amendment rights. Um, we, Earl was uh, the major organizer of the follow-up rally that happened the next year, which was the Chicago event. And um, he, he was the main organizer of that local event. And, and Lewis was the, the main organizer and kind of the hub to get this event happening um, simultaneously in multiple places around the world. And I would say one of our main um, principles, our organizational principles or missions in this respect is that every event like this shall be bigger than the event um, before it. And I, and, and I don't, I didn't say should, I said shall, because we're going to make that happen. And we can already tell from um, how the planning went. Um, the, the planning for T-Day on August 29th last year was much better than the event at the White House, and we had a better success. And from that uh, experience, and from the amount of uh, hype that we're already generating and the buzz that's out there, uh, we're confident that the event in Sacramento is going to be many times larger than the event in Chicago. So we're really happy about that. Well, gathering uh, media to support you, although we're very small at this point uh, with the show, uh, but gathering us and, and having that collective effort shouldn't hurt. <laughs> and, and I'd like to actually set up a, a precedent where all the rallies, you know, see guys, you're going to rally in your local area, contact us have you on let's talk about it let's get the information out uh that's what media is for you know not like government cia mockingbird media is here to brainwash you know this is independent activism media so uh let us in on it let us know and uh, quite honest with you i would like to have you know you guys as a staff for the show to be able to branch out anywhere and and start your rallies anywhere else, I want this to be like like a like a firecracker, it's just like explode and then spread everywhere. <laughs> well, that would, that would be that would be great, and I think we can all agree that um, after the rally, uh, we would like to you know disseminate the media that we generate from the rally uh, your way as well for further amplification of the message. Yeah, and I'd like to add also that. Although the main focus is Sacramento, this is actually a global rally. We want, we want anyone who feels like they can muster up uh, a team of people to go out in their area, their city, uh, you know, that's, that's our focus. When they go to the website, uh, which is tispringtimerally.com, uh, they'll find that uh, they can sign up we have a sign up for uh, people who are in other countries like Europe, Africa, uh, Asia. I guess I'm mentioning continents, not countries, but <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about as far as South America and then um, and, and Canada. And then we have the sign up page for Sacramento for people who know they want to come to the Sacramento rally. And of course, for the rest of the United States. And we will help manage and uh, help help them get their events started. Uh, if they if they if they don't have you know previous event experience or rally experience, uh, we will help them get started. And um, we're trying to put the tools up on the website so that they so that they can start on their own. Last year when oh. I did the rally for Chicago. I had absolutely no activism experience. And I was actually trying to back out being a leader. You know, uh, I wanted to be a participant because I didn't have the experience. But during that time, no one had stepped up. So I, I had to get going. And I started researching, you know, uh, going on the web and uh, even talking to my brother who's been an activist for phew, practically practically all this all, all of his life so um now i have a little bit of activism experience behind me and i'm willing to help anybody who wants to uh get 
a rally started in wherever they're located. Doesn't matter whether it's in the U.S., whether it's in Canada, South America, Africa, Europe, Asia. Doesn't matter. Well, one of the things that I mentioned to everybody on the call um, was that every time we do a show, um, I always write an associated article for the show. So for this particular show, along with the associated article, which I asked um, everybody's participation for that, would be the associated links to the rally, which is what you're discussing right now, so that everybody had the opportunity to see the links that are associated with the springtime rally. That'll give them all the information that they need to, to go to the links that you're talking about right now, which will, that article will be published with this edition of the springtime rally. Uh, that's number one, we all discussed that. Uh, number two, um, because we're doing this to promote the rally, we will have this, this episode produced, which will give everybody the ability to share this episode, which is the importance of this promotion, to get the word out, to continually get the word out to promote the rally. That is the whole purpose of this taping, is to get the word out to everybody and anybody we can. Another um, major incentive that I had suggested to Scott, Scott and I talked about this. The main goal of this entire rally, we're preaching to the choir if we're talking only to targeted individuals. The main goal is to get the message out to the community. One of the main things that I had a problem with when I found out I was a targeted individual was that uh, those who did not know what being a targeted individual was, I couldn't talk to them. I couldn't tell anybody what being a targeted individual was. So what Scott and I discussed was, what is an appropriate letter, a professional appropriate business type letter that you can professionally write out that does not make you look like you have any type of emotional issues, but that is professional, that is telling the community businesses surrounding the TI Rally site what is happening in your community that can be professionally written up and then distributed to the major local businesses in the area, explaining to them what is happening in that local region during those days that can professionally be given to them to maybe draw some of those community people in to that rally without scaring them away. And it can be done. That is what Scott and I discussed. Getting some of the email addresses of the local businesses in that area, or just doing a little bit of promotion from now until the time of the rally, going out and talking to some business professionals and saying, hey, um, are, are you aware of, but not in a way in which offends anybody or a way in which gives you, gives them any reason to, uh, in which to, to uh, cast a stereotype on us that we receive from people who have uh, placed that on us. That's one of the things Scott and I talked about because if you do not reach the outside targeted community, then you're not doing anything. Well, and, and it's not just reaching the outside targeted individuals. You want to reach the people who have been targeted and don't know they're targeted and then reach those people who know people that could be targeted just based on the criteria. Yes. Now, what I think we should do is have something very – Innocent, like, like like a checklist. You no, know, just just meet people. Uh, random stranger. Uh, uh, community activism survey. Have you uh, ever been into a psych ward for any situation beyond your control? Uh, do you, do you know a relative has been in a psych ward? Uh, maybe lost property. Uh, have you ever had your home broken into? 
just just any of the little symptoms yeah, random, of, random symptoms things. Of, of being a targeted individual and just if any one person checks off one of those boxes there you know hand them a flyer look you might want to come to this rally and and see if this is you and and you could grab a mass more people than that because there are some people who are targeted that could hear this information, but and, you know, walking by, like, oh, those people are crazy, you know. But they're not understanding how it all is put together. So, uh, Matthew, you got something to say with that? <laughs> oh, oh, sorry, you look like you were. I think we're getting better at doing this, and uh, I think um, you know one one idea is or one approach that we take is when you speak about this, you don't need to speak about your story. You speak about it as a concerned citizen speaking in the third person. And, Absolutely. Uh, and I think uh, I think you know I think we're getting better. I think we're actually getting pretty pretty good at um, not at sounding legitimate and we're uh, I think the flyer is a um, good example of that and I've had a lot of success reaching people it, it, it is still an issue it is obviously still an issue to be constantly mindful of um, I, I love I love the idea of leafleting local businesses ahead of the ahead of the rally I had also thought about the idea of potentially sending the flyer to all the legislators but um, I'm not sure if that's a good idea or not um, I think it's an excellent idea. Yeah, if the flyer is, I, I would put, I would put my name on the flyer and do that. Um, if you do it wrong, though, leafleting every legislator can, can, can cause you trouble. But I, I, I put my seal of approval, and I would put my name on that flyer and my address, and and have no qualms about doing that. Well, I had an issue with congressman. <coughs> congressman sent Secret Service after me. <laughs> and, and Dr. Matthew, you said it very well. It, it no longer, it can't, and not only can it no longer, it can never be, woe is me. It's, oh, woe is them. You know what I'm saying? Uh, well, there's you, a title. You got that exactly right. And, and, well, I mean, it's, well, he said that, you know, uh, it's not scaring people away with your personal stories. It's not only should we be asking uh, you know, going to the symptom list, but we should also be citing historical uh, um, documentation, uh, scientific literature, you know, executive order, you know, whatever, whatever says Jones can do this. You know, picking, picking out and picking and plucking out these little things like that and creating this list of, of, of things that will just automatically paint the picture of what's going on. I, I, think, I, good. Yeah, I think what you said, V, was important also. Uh, when you consider the fact that a lot of targeted individuals have no idea that, well, like you said, a lot of them don't know that they're targeted. I've talked to people, and I'm sure we all have, where they say that they knew strange things were going on for years. You know, five yes. some people I talked to I, I believe the longest one was like seven years before they finally realized what was happening. For me, it was a little bit different. They had, you know, psychologically bothered me so bad that I got online and I started looking. I said, I just don't get it. You know, I don't understand what's going on. I see all these things happening to me because basically it was all gang stalking for me. And uh, I finally went online um, I don't know what the date was. I think it was maybe January of 2018. So that's about six or seven months of being stalked. And I finally ran across a writing where this guy was describing everything that was happening to me. I said, oh, my God, this is what I am. <laughs> you know, it's like, so I call I it the awakening. <laughs> Pardon? I call it the awakening. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, so having... A, a, you know, documentation, a, you know, something where people can look at it and say, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, some of these things, so let me investigate. They see this paper, they see the checklist, you know, and maybe we may be able to help some people say, at least come to the realization that they're not crazy, because no doubt they've shared it with other people over that whatever period of time that they've shared it, or how long they've been targeted, 
but they don't understand what's going on, this might be an opportunity for us to help bring some people, give them the awareness right. and awakening so that they don't feel so uncomfortable. Because this is very, when you don't know what's happening and you don't understand, this is extremely uncomfortable. People that don't know what's going on, you know, if they have symptoms or things like that. This is a great way to get that word out you know, for people that could potentially be going through these things. Because honestly, I think, I think, you know, people around the world, you know, especially people in the U.S., I think at some point they've had some sort of um, contact or entity, you know, mess with them in some way. That's like, um, you know, like haunted houses and things like that. If you move into a house and all of a sudden, or, you, or you've been there for a while and all of a sudden you're, you're getting like, uh, ghost-like figures and things like that, projections and things like that. These, these are types of things that they, that they experiment on people with is they just come into your house and they, they invade your, your time and your, and everything that you have. You know, it's like they do projections in your house and, you know, sh I, you know, the paranormal side of it, I know that like a lot of the targeting does, you know, fluctuate in that way, but there, you know, in the past with all the paranormal, paranormal experimentations, that up to this point that, you know, but, but like I said, you know, it's like they, I think every person has been tampered with in some way, you know, throughout time uh, with this kind of technology and the people who they are. So, I mean, but yeah, that's true. And uh, we want to be able to get the word out as much as possible to all the people out there that do have things going on with them. Because it's not, it's not just one person. It's not just two people. It's, it's a lot of, it's a lot of people. <laughs> and uh, it's very important that the public and society sees what's happening and who we are. And, you know, to know that, you know, we are gathering together and coming together in California and other places around the world, you know, from TI Day to the springtime rally to the next TI Day to another rally that we're, that we're having, you know, we want to, you know, just put forth that effort and keep showing people, you know, what we're doing, who we are, you know, and are you, you could be t potentially a target as well. And we want you to know that there are, there's a community here of people that are, that seems to have an impact not just on ourselves, but on society by doing these rallies, you know, because people are being added and added more and more. It seems like every day and it's just different walks of life now. You know, I don't know if it's just random now or, you know, I've, I've, I've spoken to people like uh, they, they talk about their, their leadership skills. They have leadership abilities, you know, to be able to, 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 to do things and, you know, to, to talk with people and, and try to help or just, you know, rather just, you know, just, just leadership skills. You know, but um, yeah, that's that's one of the main points of that is you know we're we're all special in some way, and we all have our unique abilities, and you know they they really they it's, this this whole thing is like a religion for them, and it's been going on for this like um, this kind of thing is probably a thousand years or longer than that, and with the with the but the technology you know now probably wasn't like how it was back then. I'm not really sure if they even had technology back back then. I think they probably did it in some fashion. But but I know like it is now. No. But um, you know, it's like the whole cabal the whole cabal system that they have and that what what they've grown to be, their their religion, their cult, you know, they're this is who they are, this is what they do. And they participate like this around the world and this whole thing is just another form of human trafficking and they're they're pulling people into it into their satanic death cult. You know, with their satanic death cult, and they're using us for mutilation, humiliation, uh, destruction, chaos, and murder. You know, and, and my control, my controlling people into doing things like, uh, you know, committing murder or, or mass shootings or anything of that nature. You know, that's that's just uh, what I call the death system. You know, like from just uh, you know movies. You see these types of things in movies, but in reality, it's it's real. You know, but. That's what they do. They, they put things in movies for us to look at and we see them. And, you know, it's like, um, you know, when you see it on a movie, it's not really weird, real at that time because, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's on a movie, you know. But in reality, wipe away that movie, you know, it's, it's, it's really happening. And that's, that's one of the main reasons why, you know, like you go to the theater because you go to the theater, you watch a movie and it's not real. You know, it's just, you know, science fiction. But, you know, in, in all reality and in our in our timeline, this stuff is actually happening, you know, right now as we speak. So that's that's the most important thing that the public needs to understand. Is, yeah, unfortunately, but that's that's one of the main the main things that the public needs to understand is that you know we we are here and they are there. You know, there's 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 we're we're two different people right now. I mean, 
because we're we're being you know we're suffering through this targeting uh, program through the through the satanic death cults that they have and their their religion that they follow, you know the cabal, and you know we want to be able to exploit that and show the world that this thing is this thing is everywhere, and you know we we got to keep coming together, and we have to keep rallying and pushing forward to one another, because don't I think personally the, re- the reason why this thing has probably lasted for so long, and I've always said this is because you know, um, their tactics that they use, their mind control tactics that they use on people, this is, this is how they keep people down and isolated because they, you can't, you can't rally and come together if you're, if you're being, if you're isolated like this, yep. you know, if you yeah. don't, if you don't know other TIs, if you don't know other TIs are out there, and you don't know how to make connections, you know, or, or there, if there's no one trying to connect with you, then you're never going to know, you know, we're just going to sit here and be attacked by technology, some form of technology. You know, rather if it's on the planet Earth, they come from space, you know, satellite technology, something around there. But someone's got to be in contact with you somewhere. But you're not going to ever know what's going on with it. You don't know. You don't know there's a whole community of TIs out there. Like, I'm in communication with people, and I have been in the past. So it may be, I wouldn't say so many, but, um, you know, there's people that didn't know there was a TI community, didn't know there were other TIs out there. They always thought it was just them. You know, they always thought it was just them it was happening to. You know, there's something yeah. there was something going on with them. So I mean yeah. So this this is um this is a, one of our biggest ways of uh, of putting putting ourselves out there and letting them know that there are others out here and that we are here to, here to help and that we do care, you know. So that's 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 philosophy. I just wanted to uh, make the comment um, that um, we are taking, uh, we're kicking around the idea as if uh, in one of the workshops that might be created at the, uh, at the rally um, uh, that um, it, the workshop might be called something like, uh, um, are you a TI or, um, you know, do you think you might be a TI along that? along that lines, we're still kicking around the idea of it. Um, but the point is, is we're going to be um, trying to give people that have questions about if they are a targeted right. individuals, we can maybe try to help them discover if they are a targeted individual or not by giving some signs and some symptoms of experience and past and, and how this program. Well, well, I mean, that, that's, that's sort of the idea, but instead of making it a, a, a workshop, because that will seem to, I mean, it's it's two it's two different ways you can do it, but to, to have people sit down and figure out if there's something or other, I think may be the weaker of, of the approach because, you know, at that point it's, it's some sort of indoctrination, some sort of a uh, maybe a little cultish feel to it. But I think people individually should do this as their personal workshop, but to go around and to ask other people, you know, like I said, the survey thing, do you feel any of this? Is this, 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 this? And, and, and have them look at the rally because the rally's already going on. And it's like, Hey, you know, I, I felt like this one day, Hey, you know, my house got broken into it and stuff was arranged. And it, wait, are these people mad because of this? They might pick up a sign and start rallying there with you. Yep. They've got to see the action and, and then slow, get, slowly get the information to see the action. Yeah. <laughs> In my opinion. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah That's a good sure. idea. Thank you. And then also, but as a workshop, if I could um, do an idea here, um, not only should these rallies be political, but I think there should be um, organizations to official organizations put together that can go and approach universities. Now, doing stuff in, in front of Capitol Hill or, or any, any Capitol building, that, that's fine. Um, but where the answers are co- going to come from, the validation, you go to the historians, the, the warfare historians, the, you know, you go to the law libraries, you go to the universities, the science departments, 
and you say, hey, prove this isn't happening. You know, that right there, if the interest is generated, it's a subject that's brought to the class, you know, each student has its own power to say, hey, I want to try to sell as a science project. <laughs> you yeah. know, I want to research this. Okay, so uh, it, we can it, uh, effectively flood every science department of every university in the country with this, if done properly. That's the plan I'm actually working on myself, kind of brewing up. But I would like to talk more about that with you, the TI leaders, and doing these things because strategy, it's all about the strategy at this point. Um, yeah. There's so much we can do and depend on as far as the human spirit. There's so much we can do as far as um, understanding and, and knowledge. But when we have those resources, and all TIs are usually cut off from resources, but there are resources around us that they don't bother to try to cut us off from because we wouldn't have ever thought to use them. That's my speciality. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I come in. So I think we Well, have and you know what? I, was, a, I was no dummy. I, I knew that, um, that if uh, I went ahead and said, let's promote this rally, I knew that this guy was going to do um, everything imaginable to mankind to make sure that um, it was done the right way because he knows what he's doing. So um, that that was a guarantee. Um, so all that said, you I, I can I can I can put a guarantee on the fact that um, once this this production is produced and the article is written up. Yeah, you know, we all will be extremely pleased with the product that is put out to the community, which is the main goal, is to put out a quality product to the community and let them know that we are a bunch of individuals that care about the community, that care about our cause, that uh, we do care about targeted individuals and the community. Uh, the springtime rally is an important event to all of us and that we, we're all here because we care. They can go to tispringtimerally.com to register, and if there's any targeted individuals in need of support in the Sacramento or Bay Area of Northern California, they can go to TI Springtime Rally Answers at Proton Mail on the uh, tispringtimerally.com website. Thank you. Anything else? Any links that we got though in? Yeah. Uh, the only reason... Um, Make sure too. Everybody remembers all of those links will be associated with this, uh, this and the article that will be attached to this. You can click on all of the associated links. Okay. Thank you so much for having yeah, us on. Thank you. Yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. You're very very welcome. And with all of that said, um, I want uh, to thank uh, each and every one of you very very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, Earl, thank you so much, sir. Uh, for joining us, uh, Scott, uh, Scott Lewis, Michelle, Justin, and uh, Dr. Matthew. Thank you so much for joining us, and uh, always my co-host, V. Um, this has been a very special edition today um, to announce the 2019 Springtime Rally in Sacramento, California. Uh, I am Kristen Manners. Um, thank you so much for joining us.